Hello, my name is Sam Gleski. I'm Sam Rocketman on GitHub. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about game development, specifically the open source game Endless Sky. I've been playtesting it recently and I discovered a bug and I found the origin of the bug using the git command git bisect. So this video is to teach playtesters as well as even developers how useful git bisect is. We're going to traverse a lot of commits, um, almost 500 commits to find the bug in a very short amount of time. And I'm going to explain in this video what is git bisect and how it works. We're going to read the git bisect manual, the help manual that comes with git. Basically make it translated into plain English. So uh, if you encounter other git manuals, you'll know how to read them. And then I'm going to show off a real bug that I found, and we're going to use a um, git bisect to find the commit which introduced it. So this is an explanation of how git bisect works conceptually. It's a log base to operation, <clears throat> which means every time it searches for a good or bad commit, it uses a binary search to narrow the results very quickly. I made some fake commits here. This is just a text editor where you can see the line numbers on the left. So let's say this is 27 commits. And you have a bad commit in newer history and somewhere in older history a known good commit. And you run git bisect between these two commits. What you're going to do is you're going to test this version in the center. And if it's bad, then you know that the lower half is going to contain your bug. If it's good, then your upper half is going to contain the bug. So let's say this is good. Then what bisect does is it will go to the center and run another test. Is it good? If it's good, it means the upper half is the culprit. If it's bad, the lower half. Let's say this is bad. So we'll go in the middle again. It does the test here. Once again, it's going to choose a half depending on whether it's good or bad. If it's good, it's going to be the upper half. If it's bad, it's going to be the lower half in older history. So let's say that here we tested good. So that means there's only two commits left to check. What well, what it does then is it'll pick one of these two. I'm not sure which, but we'll just pick one. And let's say we run our test and the test is bad. Because this was good and this was bad, we know that this is our commit. So this this in concept is how git bisect works. It allows you to traverse large amounts of commits and every time it tests it cuts the problem space in half. Um, so let's say hypothetically you have 180,000 commits. You would, a worst case scenario is you would cut it in half 17 times to find any one commit in the worst case scenario that is the culprit. So I use the terminal for git, and the terminal, the command line client for git has help pages for all the commands. How you use it is you type git help, and then the subcommand you want to learn about. In this instance, we want to learn about git bisect. The synopsis helps show you a quick summary of how the subcommands, options, and arguments work. You can look to that for the order of things. It has subcommands and each subcommand has its own options and arguments. The description is a little bit more helpful here in that it shows you all the different ways that you can call git bisect. And there's three ways that we are going to use it. We're going to start a bisect and we're going to mark commits good or bad. So if we looked at the syntax for 
get bisect start. Any option or argument with a square bracket means that it's optional. So we don't have to provide this argument. So we'll skip it. No checkout. We also don't have to provide this argument. So we're going to skip that. But one thing that I would like to point out next is we want the next two arguments. So you could provide optionally bad followed optionally good. What it's referring to here is the commitish. So you, you can provide a commit, a tag, a branch, and then here you could provide a commit, a tag, a branch. So to initiate a bisect for debugging, you would run git bisect start, the bad commit, followed by the good commit. We also mentioned that I also mentioned that we're going to be using uh, get bisect good and bad. So here that's these two options where you can mark a commit that you're in currently with bad or you can mark it as good. And with that let's go actually explain the problem with a live demo of using it. So replicating a bug. So when I launched into Sky, I found that while I was playtesting, that when I would press M for map, and then go to the shipyard's map panel, anytime I click on a ship, the game would crash. Now, bear in mind this is a development version and not a stable release. It's important to be able to replicate problems, so we're going to do it again. Get bisect only works well when the problem reliably replicates because you need a known good and a known bad result, and it needs to happen every time. So once again, I'm going to push M. I'm going to press S for shipyard. I'm going to click on any ship, doesn't matter. And it crashed. So let's take a look at how big the problem space is going to be. I know for a fact that the stable release is not suffering from this problem and the commit that I'm at is which is the tip of this branch so just for the sake of this video let's inspect the commit history so that way you understand how powerful git bisect really is and how quickly it narrows down problems so I am going to do I'm gonna show all my tags and here is the latest stable tag let's count how many commits we're going to be inspecting. So I'm going to do git log. I'm going to make everything one line. And between the stable version and my current commit, which is head, it's shorthand for the current commit, we can count how many commits there are. So we're going to run git bisect across 498 commits. We're not sure where the bug occurs within those 498 commits. So that is the space we're going to be inspecting. I'm going to inspect my workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and clean my workspace because in order to run bisect and for bisect to check out commits, you need a completely cleaned workspace of all compiled files. So let me reset the credits file, clean my workspace. It deleted all the build artifacts and my Docker file. Um, so let's go ahead and start our git bisect. I mentioned earlier that we can git bisect start the bad, well, let's look real quick. It's uh, git bisect start bad then good. Okay, so git bisect start head is bad the stable release was good. 
So we've checked out a commit halfway through, and Bisect is telling us worst case scenario is roughly eight more bisects. It could be shorter, uh, but it's it's making a best estimate here. So let's build. I am going to. Uh, I'm building everything in Docker. I'm not going to explain that in this video, but just know that I am using Docker because I want to create an app image and I want to simplify um, my dependencies and contain them all into one space so I don't have to install a bunch of dependencies on my for development on my computer. That's why I'm using Docker. So let's go ahead and build our app image. Keep in mind the commit that we're building now is, um, if we look back at our original explanation, uh, we are building somewhere in the middle of the bisect. So we marked a bad, we know the stable release was good, and bisect start us out, starts us out halfway through. Now I'm only going to build, show the full build output the first time. For all subsequent times, I'm going to cut the build uh, recording pretty short. But just know that this full build time occurs each time I'm running it bisect, and I'm going to be doing this eight times. But it sounds like a lot, but it's not. Keep in mind we're traversing 498 commits to narrow down one bad commit and we only need to build the game and test the game eight times to find that. I like app images, so the, I'm using Endless Sky scripts to build the app image. I might do another video later on how I, uh, how I develop with Docker, with Endless Sky. Uh, but I'm not really going to cover that here because the video is going to be pretty long with this. But I want to make, I'm taking it slow because I really want to give uh, the you as a viewer time to really ingest the power of Git Bisect and how it works. So here's my uh, short hash here. We see we have our Endless Sky app image build with the short hash. Uh, my scripts are renaming this. It actually is normally without the short hash. Uh, but I like to know I'm running the correct version. So here, let's play test it again. So we're going to enter our ship. M for map. S for shipyard. Click. We do not crash. So we know that this is a good build. So let's go ahead and quit. And we're going to tell Git Bisect that this is good. But before you do that, you want to clean your workspace. So I'm going to Git Checkout Credits and Git Clean to delete all the compiled files. And I'm going to mark this as good. So I'm going to say git bisect good. And it checks out a new commit halfway between again. So we're going to repeat this process. And I'm going to keep repeating this process. But from now on, we're going to skip the compile times to speed up the video a bit. Seven steps to go. So once again, uh, Let's go ahead and build it. And I'm going to skip the build time for this. With the build complete, let's go ahead and 
run our game with this build. Um, something that I didn't really highlight earlier, but I, I replaced the version with the commit hash so I know that I'm on the correct development version uh, when I'm playing. When I'm play testing, it's useful for me to know. So let's go ahead and try to replicate it again. M, S for shipyard, and let's click on a ship. It's still good. So we know that this is good. So let's mark this as good with git bisect. I just reset the workspace, git bisect good. Six steps left to go. Now there's only 55 commits left to test out of 498 and it's telling us uh, worst case six more tries before we find the, the problem commit. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and build. And skipping to the end. So I've skipped continuing to build all the way until we have a failure. So I just built this. We're at commit 7C5371B6. Launching the game. I can see this is in fact my build from the version. I'm going to press M for map, S for shipyard, and then in the list of ships, I'm going to click a ship. And you see here, we replicated our crash. So we're going to want to mark this as bad. So I am going to clean my workspace. And I'm going to tell bisect this is a bad build. It says I have roughly three more builds to test. So let's go ahead and build it. Build finished. Let's run this build and run through our test again. F2, F25, F25, yep. So enter ship, M for map, S for shipyard, click a ship. So the previous one failed and was marked bad. This one is good, so we're going to mark it as good. We're getting closer. So we're going to mark. First, I need to clean my workspace and we will mark it as good. Two builds left. Build complete. We are on 70E. Enter ship, M for map, S for shipyard. Click on a ship. That crashed. So let's clean our workspace and mark this as a bad build. Roughly one more build. Build complete. We are on 6DD. M for map, S for shipyard. It crashed. 
So we're going to mark this one as bad. Two revisions left. So we still need to run this one to test it. So we're still inside of bisect, roughly zero steps left. I need to run one last build, and this will be the final build. Bisect will tell us which commit is the bad commit. Uh, as a quick summary, this is all. This has been done out of 500, no, 498 commits. We traverse all, all of this uh, in a relatively short amount of time, considering. I was able to find it pretty quickly. Um, go ahead. I'll go ahead and give a summary at the end. Build done. We are on seven F three. So press M for map, S for shipyard, and crash. So we are going to tell Git Bisect that this was a bad build. Clean my workspace. And we're going to tell git bisect it was bad. And this is it. It's done. It told us that this is the commit. It gave us the files, the commit ID. And what's cool about this is I was able to go to the developers and I gave them the commit ID. I told them, hey, there's a crash. I found the commit. Here's the commit that introduced the crash. The commit before this one was good. This commit introduced it. And um, it saved them tons of time because they were able to fix it immediately, literally within 15 minutes, a fix was pushed. Uh, because they were able to spend time uh, analyzing the code and fixing the bug and they didn't have to spend any time finding it. So as a play tester, play testers can help find bugs and not just report bugs. Um, so the, Bisect is extremely powerful for this. It's pretty easy to use. Hopefully this video has shown you how easy it is to use. Um, whether you're a developer trying to figure out which commit a bug was introduced or, um, or a play tester like me who is trying to help make the developer's job easier, Git Bisect is an awesome tool. It can also do automated uh, testing. Here we did it very manual, but uh, you can even actually automate this even further with a script and have it run through the Bisect automatically. And at, if, you, if you automate it, you can literally just start it and walk away. And when you come back, it'll tell you which commit was the problem. Uh, I don't... I'm not sure how to develop this project, so I'm not writing tests for it or anything like that. So for me, manual is the only way. But a developer, I'm sure, could write tests, write a test to check the behavior, and um, and then run through it automatically so that they don't have to try as hard as I did to get through all this. I say hard, but keep in mind, I within 30 minutes of doing this, I was able to traverse... 598 commits so that's pretty good in my book if you like this video and there's uh and you'd like to see more i guess uh you know feel free to subscribe and and reach out to me ask me any questions in the endless sky discord i am sam rocketman in the endless sky discord as well